you know, the short squeeze on silver raises that awareness. People are going to start looking for some ways of how we create transparency. When it comes to transparency, I think cram chain is, is hard to beat. Please join us for our next live stream Sunday, March 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll go over current events, past guests, and of course, gold and silver news. Once again, our next live stream will be Sunday, March 28th, 9 p.m. Eastern. See you then. This is the start of part two of our interview with the CEO of the Silver Bullion Group, Gregor Gregerson. And now he's going to tell us a little bit more about the cash gold token system, the gram chain system, as well as the benefits and the transparency that ultimately they'll bring, possibly transforming the bullion and fintech industry at large at the same time. Gregor, it's great to be with you again. Thank you for joining us. Now, Gregor, you are also a co-founder of uh, Cash Private Limited. It says here, a tech company that tokenizes real-world assets and that uh, the Cash Gold token is actually your company's first product um, and that it's 100% fully backed by investment-grade gold held in vaults all around the world. Um, could you explain in maybe uh, layman's terms for our audiences how the Cash Gold token system is fully backed by gold. Yeah, so cash, silver bullion, uh, basically our software development arm, which is called LittleBit, developed GramChain, which is an asset tracking system. But then cash is a separate company, which I'm also a founder. Um, one of the other co-directors is actually a former uh, deputy director of uh, the Central Bank of Singapore, um, MIS. And we spent a lot of time with legalities and so on, how to enable the tokenization of physical gold without it becoming a security token in itself. And basically, you can think of it like a digital warehouse receipt uh, using uh, uh, Ethereum blockchain, in this case, as um, you know, the blockchain. And so that makes it compatible with you know, crypto exchanges, with wallets, and so on and so on. And uh, yeah, say two go together very well. So you cannot have cash gold token without cram chain because in order to create a token and one token is one gram of pure gold, you actually have to deposit a gold bar first into cram chain. Say you deposit a hundred gram uh, gold bar. That gold bar is going to, we multiply the, the weight, a hundred grams times the purity which says 999, which means we're getting 999 tokens out of it because one token is pure gold. And we need to do that because otherwise, how do you differentiate between a 4.9 gold bar and a 3.9 gold bar? Or a gold bar, which is, you know, some of these LBMA bars, some of them are only 98.5% pure or something. Uh, there are certain rules on what it can be. So uh, we have to basically have the pure gold standard. Um, we have to put a lot of industry specific things. How do you convert grams into troy ounces? It seems like a simple multiplication, but it's not. If you go to the LBMA uh, specification on it, it's actually quite complex uh, because it doesn't divide. So you, you basically have to work through all these industry sort of things to create a standard, which then allows you to um, digitize that gold and make it fungible. Fungible means that Every unit of cash gold token is now the same with every other one. And because it is like that, you can take delivery of any bar you want. So in the case of uh, cash, if you're putting, uh, say, 100 gram gold bar in there, you're getting 999 um, cash gold tokens. If you put an American Eagle gold coin in there, you're only getting the amount of physical gold which is in there, which would be um, around 31, 32 uh, CGT, but you're not getting the premium. So what that means is you want to put in the simple the gold bars, the bigger the better, because anybody can take delivery of it. And the beauty of the system is, as we are expanding it, right now we have uh, cash has accounts in uh, here in Singapore, uh, we have it in uh, Dallas with uh, Dylan Gale, Gage, uh, IDS, storing it. We are storing it with Loomis right now. Um, 
with alternatives being set up. We have it here in Singapore. Uh, Prinx, we already opened up the account, so Prinx is okay with the system, which means that as we're distributing in more and more locations, it will be possible for you to deposit, say, a gold bar in um, IDS Dallas and get CGT gold tokens for it. And then you can take delivery of a gold bar in Singapore or soon in Zurich and uh, by redeeming these gold tokens back into the physical bar. So you basically don't have to ship the gold back and forth. So that's one of the advantages. And the other idea with cash gold token is that we are essentially allowing third party participants to become part of it. Um, and Crumb Chain is a system that can be deployed in third party vaults. It's not a vault management system, it's just a physical asset tracking that works with the vault operator. And uh, when it comes to cash, cash then allows you to sell, uh, to take redemption of a gold bar and sell it to any one of the dealers which are willing to buy the gold bars that you just redeemed. And by doing it, you're basically creating a marketplace so that you're not tied in to, say, Silver Bullion buying it back. Um, Dylan Gage is also part of the system. They actually bought equity into cash. Um, but, you know, as more and more dealers come in, you're basically creating a marketplace. So you're not, you're not dependent on anything. And we're really creating a distributed sort of marketplace for these, uh, for these gold tokens. And uh, we build it up all to scale. So I think you should look at cash as being a little bit like a technology in the way that Visa or MasterCard is a, is a payment technology. So we just create the tools and we let other people use the tools. And, and that's what, what's allowing the scalability of it. Can the claim that the cash gold token being fully backed by gold, um, some of our viewers may be wondering, can it be publicly verified? If you go to the cash website, uh, you will find a, a cash explorer, which basically uh, will show you the amount of ounces, I mean of grams in this case, of pure gold that we are storing. And the explorer shows you where each one of these bars is. Um, you can click on, say, a location like Lumi Singapore, for example, or Idea Stars. And you will see the bars. You click on one of the bars, and you will see a photo of it, a serial number, and so on. And below it, you will have a series of events. You will see uh, when it was scanned in, by who it was scanned in, at which location, all the physical properties of the bars. Uh, you will have another event which shows who the custodian of the bar is, basically who has control of the bar at the vault. And to prove that, we have um, we actually uploading. Um, uh, the actual vault document. So uh, this stuff has a lot of backing to it. It's actually a scan of the vault document showing the serial number and the actual custodian name. And then lastly, the custodian, which would be cash, in the case of cash, would then lock that bar in order to create the CGT tokens. So there's basically uh, a contract, a token governor, which will look at how many tokens are out there in the blockchain and will say, okay, we are now having 500 new grams of gold which came in, which means at a purity of 999, so let's say it's 495 new tokens I can create. So these 495 new tokens are created and, and sent to whoever deposited this gold. So essentially, if you have a gold bar, you can deposit it with IDS dollars, with still engaged, for example, uh, request them to have it um, uh, digitized into cash gold tokens, and send cash will send you the actual tokens. And then if you want to take the redemption from somewhere else, you can do that. In the meantime, uh, cash gold tokens are traded on uh, Bit, uh, Bithump and uh, Bitrex. Uh, as well as uh, Uniswap and a number of other exchanges. So you can exchange it for other uh, things, such as Bitcoin or Ethereum or other digital tokens. So it is a very practical, high trust sort of setup. And uh, I would say for people more interested, just go to cash.gold. Uh, 
uh, cache C A C H E, and we called it cache because it sounds similar to cache. It cache can also mean a cache of gold, and in when you come to computer side, cache is uh, something where you temporarily store information in a very quick and efficient way. And sometimes um, uh, people in the crypto industry they like to say move out of one say Bitcoin and move into something else which maintains its value uh, in order to then later move out. So uh, that's where it, it sort of makes sense towards the cash side. So there are three reasons why we call it cash. And that is cash.gold. Yeah. It's actually interesting, Grego, because the um, cash gold token works in concert, as you said, with the gram chain system. And the gram chain system itself is an asset tracking management system. How do you see it implemented globally and uh, how will it benefit the precious metals industry? The first reason, is, first thing is we have to give people a reason why they would want to use it. And um, so it's a chicken and egg problem. Uh, it says you have to have a certain minimum amount of volume. Uh, in the case of cash, for example, the more volume says the more people get interested in it. Um, but you need people to be interested in it in order to have more volume. And, and cash is one of the drivers, you know, demand drivers for the gram chain uh, system. So uh, we are talking with uh, some uh, family offices. We're talking with some banks, uh, actually pretty high levels even, uh, which wanted to find out more about how Grand Chain works. Um, I don't know if they have a genuine interest or if they just kind of want to take notes to build their own thing, but, uh, you know, it's really, I, I think there's no shortcut to it. It's basically a matter of uh, trying to get people interested and finding partners that are willing to work for you. So we are quite open from the cash perspective to uh, sell equity, to partners which have an interest in it, and we're really developing it as something that we don't want to limit to silver bullion or to ourselves, but find like-minded sort of individuals, corporations, and so on to come in and, and build something up. And that's basically where we are. It's still the early days on uh, Grand Chain and uh, cash. And I think the next two years, you know, it, it, it's going to start developing and have some momentum uh, developing behind it. I think a lot of viewers would instantly hear the word like chain and their ears will perk up a bit and they may actually go, hey, why don't you call it gram chain? Gregor, is it in any way influenced by blockchain technology? The blockchain makes is, is an important part of it because um, what you have to understand is blockchain you can put very, very little data on a blockchain. I mean, Bitcoin, when you transfer Bitcoin, you're basically just transferring a number from one address to another. So you never really put a whole inventory system on a blockchain. But what we do is, when, uh, when, when I say go to Prinks, and Prinks says agrees to running crumb chain. Then you're going to have a Prinks employee scanning in the vault in Dallas, in Dallas or wherever, that bar, and he would have logged into that system, into the crumb chain system. So that data is all being recorded and is being sent as an event, as a data packet basically, to what's called an API, which is sort of where that data goes. And once it goes to API, we hash that data which basically means we create a signature which is specific to that data and we send that to the Ethereum blockchain. And think of it like being a notarization. It's the same thing as going to a notary and saying, hey, this really happened. Make sure you keep a track that this really happened. And since the data gets written to our database. Now, that's where the blockchain element comes in. We are basically just recording that this hash, which is a 64-digit number, basically, was written at that time. And that what makes it sure that we can never change the data that was written without it becoming obvious that everybody was manipulated. And that's what's a key defining thing of gram chain, because whenever you have an asset tracking system, if there's a dispute between two parties, the way it's going to play out in court is that one party is going to accuse the other party of having falsified the numbers or the numbers are not reliable or something else. 
So from a legal and from a practical point of view, you need to be ironclad that that number has not been changed. And so that's what I focused on when we built Gramchain and sending a hash on a blockchain, not to trade things back and forth. That's not how, how we use blockchain, but just to record that numbers that cannot be changed as a notarization. That made a lot of sense. So the fact, and the three key characteristics of Gramchain is we are not putting the data. It's actually the vault operator, which is a third party. The data gets written on a public blockchain, which makes sure it cannot be changed. And all the data is public to everybody and in real time. That combination of these three things makes Gramchain a game changer. There's nothing like it. And that's you know, an extreme form of transparency because for it to work, all of the data on Gramchain has to be public. And that's why I'm not writing in sensitive stuff like who the owner is, just who the custodian is, meaning, and that's optional. But essentially, it's, it's as transparent as you can make a system. And so what we are betting on with Gramchain is that just like, you know, say, silver squeeze movement is sort of pushing now, that there's a bigger demand for accountability on where that silver is, and most importantly, how it's being used. Because you might have a, a thousand bars there, and you might have a fund which indeed is showing a thousand bars, but what if those same serial numbers are used for some other purpose? And another, and another, and another, and another. Just like what happened with their 140% game stock shorts. Right? So it's, you need to know that the bar is there by serial number, and you need to know what it's being used for. And the way Gramchain helps with all of this is because you can define in Gramchain how it's being used. And our thinking is from a legal point of view to commit people wanting to use Gramchain to basically give sort of um, uh, uh, a legal commitment that if they're saying, because they themselves will be saying that this bar is used for this purpose, for example, to back, say, CGT tokens, that's where we're going to have preference if there are going to be other creditors for that same bar. And once we start having a system like this, once people get a little bit smarter, they're not going to accept a bar which is going to be used as backing for cram chain. So what I'm basically trying to do is it's like a swamp out there where nobody knows what bar is doing what in many ways, or might not know and I want to bring this transparency. And if enough people start using the system, then we can put in transparency. And, and so that's sort of my hope. And, and I'm looking for, for like-minded individuals, which basically driven by this desire to have very transparent systems, are going to join us uh, to use this technology. I'm just switching gears for a bit to talk about some of the vendors and operators. In the case of, say, vault operators, some of them may be watching this broadcast and saying, what do you mean when you say we're actually going to physically scan the bullion being processed? Actually, it's not that much uh, to ask of them because there are quite a number of companies which ask vault operators to take a photo of the bullion. Mm -hmm. And we designed our system so that it's actually quite a lot easier to use our system than to have to make a separate photo for it. So if you have to put the data into one system, then you take a photo and you have to... Uh, you know, takes the photo out of the, the camera and you have to transfer it and you have to resize it and then you have to upload it somewhere. That's a lot of work. For us, because it's all integrated, when you use Gramchain, you basically get RFID scanners, you get RFID chips, you get tamper evident bags, it's all instruction manual and so on, and you basically just put it in here, you take a photo, you put a few basic pieces of information, zoop, that thing goes over to the API, gets written on the blockchain, done. You put in the wrong data, you don't get to change it because it can never be changed. What you do instead is you create another event. You do the same thing again, and uh, because instead of maybe instead of one kilo, you said it's a two kilo bar, right? So you just redo it and you put one kilo and the thing gets updated. But the fact that there was two kilos before, that can never go away. And that's a hallmark of a transparent system. You need to build systems which are so transparent that people are kind of afraid of making mistakes because everybody can see the mistake. 
But at the same time, you cannot penalize people for making mistakes because too much because then they are going to be scared to use the system. And uh, so I think we found a good balance because you, you scan the item, then it's actually checked when you do the assignment by the vault again, and then in the case of cash, we do another check, so we have a triple check. Um, it's not that we can ever change the data, but we'll just ask them to basically rescan it. And uh, that's how everybody kind of keeps, is being kept honest. And that goes a little bit into you know, game theory and so on, and the life of systems and how to maintain themselves um, you know, without the having to be one guy running and fixing everything all the time. Yeah. So I, I really hope that you know, just like Bitcoin has become what it is, Bitcoin really is a very simple thing at the end of the day, with all the contact being completely transparent. And that's what creates the transparency and, and the trustlessness of it. And I'm trying to build something a little bit along these lines when it comes to asset tracking, um, with, uh, you know, long term will, will, will not need to be changed and basically has that transparency. Given that Ramchain is also like a database, how would it actually handle erroneous data that gets entered into the system in, in that sense? It, it doesn't, it just records it. And then somebody would have to say, you know, you made a photo for one kilo bar and you're saying here's a two kilo bar. Why do you do that? And then the guy goes, oh shit, uh, let me go back, let me rescan it and make a new event. So uh, with Gramchain, you can look at the status of the data at, you know, in the past or at current, but normally people always look at the current data. So if you made a mistake, just go and fix it. And Gramchain basically is going to have the new event at one kilo and it's going to be one kilo. Um, before tokens are issued, we will do a manual review to make sure uh, on the cash side that the data entered indeed matches. And it's actually kind of easy to do because when you deposit 10 kilos of gold, say at a vault, you need to make sure, you don't necessarily just need to make sure that each one of the bars is one kilo, you can just sum them together and you know that deposit 10 kilos, you get a sum of that you know, order, and it says 10 kilos. If it says 11 kilos, you know something's wrong. And because we have, you know, the vault itself is putting it in, then the vault has to do a double check, and then we do a double check, you basically have a triple check. And if something's wrong, because all the data is public, chances are, you know, everybody can be an auditor. And they can point out, hey, here's a photo. It should really be. So, yeah, everybody is an auditor, basically, because they can see all the data in real time. And because we have the photo and a gold bar or silver bar has the weight, the mass, the print, and all the information in front. So again, it's quite, you know, it's, there's really very little scope for things to go wrong. If something's wrong, we just fix it. That's the idea. That would actually, um, this would actually bring us to the issue of uh, adoption, Gregor. Um, how confident are you that an ETF or a fund can use GramChain? The, the question is not can say. I mean, they definitely can uh, do they want to. And, and that we'll have to see. And, and that depends on uh, the customers. You know, if, if a customer says, I'm happy to just buy, say, some GLD and, and you know, trade it over here and that's all I need, um, then why should they bother with something like Ramchain? But if a customer says, I want more transparency, you know, I, I, I actually want to see my bar. I want to make sure, and, and they can use Gramchain in with their own ways. Gramchain just makes sure the bar is there and you get all these details and so on. So if there's an increased demand and talking with wealth managers and other entities, we are seeing more and more demand. And as people become aware of it, and as movements like you know, the short squeeze on silver raises that awareness, um, people are going to start looking for some ways of how we create transparency. And when it comes to transparency, I think Gramchain is, is hard to beat um, because we put a passion into it, which I think is, goes well beyond some corporate company wanting to do a project uh, on this. And it, it is, it's more or less 12 years of development as a result of that through different interactive processes. Gregor, if Gramchain were an industry standard as you hope it will be, then uh, eventually bullion dealers and vaults all around the world would possibly actually begin to join and, um, excuse me, begin to participate in the 
gram chain ecosystem, as you describe it, um, there'll be quite a lot of benefits for them, won't there? It's, that's an idea. You know, it, it, blockchain and crypto is all about decentralization, where you don't have one central point controlling it. When it comes to physical gold, you obviously always have a physical location, right, where you need to store it. Um, but Gramchain is designed to essentially create as many checks and balances and distribute who does what in a way that, you know, it has many of the good sides of decentralized uh, blockchain type of features in it. And in blockchain or in crypto speech, you know, it's basically an oracle. In, in the crypto world, a connection between the crypto world and the physical is called an oracle. And so when you use Gramchain to basically create a token, uh, you're sort of creating that connection. And then it all comes down to trust. You know, is this just made up stuff? Uh, or is it really there? And, and I think, you know, a big push for Gramchain will come when we see some other systems fail. Right now in the crypto world, I mean, there's things like uh, Tether stable coins, you know, which supposedly are backed by US dollar, it's just never been an audit, um, partially because banks don't want anything to do with it. And so uh, at some point, I think this is going to explode. And, and, you know, it's going to be a big sort of uh, fallout from that. And I think a result of that is going to be people are going to put a lot more attention about making sure there's actually the goods behind the claim. And, and I think, you know, we just sometimes you just have to wait for some world event to happen um, for people to get more interested in that technology. In the meantime, we keep on building it. We keep on adding more capabilities. We are now looking at, you know, creating a, a gold testing events, a gold audit events. We've been talking with some of the large audit companies to use the system directly to scan um, and uh, as well as evaluators. You know, because we can not just do bullion, we can do Rolex watches, art pieces, Picassos, and so on. And you need, uh, you know, third party auditors to sort of, or evaluators to give you an opinion of the price. And you need a, a, a credible way of recording that. And Crunchyn can do all of that. So, uh, yeah, I think the potential is, is very large. It's mostly a matter of getting people to understand what it is we're trying to do. And I think it's going to complement physical storage of gold very well. Uh, and it's just giving people more options, whether they want to use it or not. You know, it's completely up to them. Just how is the circulation of the cash gold token so far since you've launched it? So we launched it about a bit over a year ago. Um, I believe right now we're about three and a half, four million dollars. Um, an interesting thing is because it's easily redeemable, uh, people are, are getting into it. And since they are uh, uh, trying out the delivery, <laughs> so it's it's not as easy to build up uh, because first you have to build up the trust, and the way you build up trust is for people to actually take gold back out to make sure it actually works. Uh, so we're we're very in that phase right now, uh, uh, but at the same time we we have pretty good circulation. We can go to Google nowadays, and you can type uh, cash CGT, CGT is a symbol, basically it's a token symbol, volume. And you will actually get the daily volume. And we've been running between 300,000 to 1.5 million in daily traded volume on the crypto exchanges. So um, people uh, are starting to use it on digital asset exchanges. Um, Gregor, how does CGT, the cash gold token, um, how does it actually benefit the holders of gold and silver? meaning the holders of the actual bullion, how do they uh, benefit? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, one scenario is always like to point out, because some people, you know, just don't seem to like the whole concept of blockchain wholesale. But um, if we really have a major financial collapse or currency crisis, uh, you might not be able to get uh, to your bank. And, you know, we have quite a number of customers which are throwing some gold with us. And they're saying, so uh, what if you can't wire funds? You know, how do I get the gold? Because you might you probably are not able to ship it at the point of time like that, you know, physically. Uh, if you sell it and you get US dollars for it, and then if you cannot wire the US dollars for whatever reason, how do you get the wealth, you know, from the gold to you? 
And uh, I think that's where, where Bitcoin and crypto now has an interesting alternative. You know, so uh, you might not want to keep your money in it, but as a short-term replacement of having a swift wire transfer, you know, um, I think it's an improvement of a bank. <laughs> you know, as long as you, as you have a way of uh, then trading it for something else as soon as you receive it. So you should look at it in that point of view. Uh, that's the interesting thing about cash. It's what I mentioned earlier. As we're building out this network, you basically will be able to deposit gold, say, in uh, Dallas, and the next day take delivery in Singapore. Or vice versa. So, you know, it, it becomes easier for you to, to move physical. And gold basically is, is gold. I mean, the cash gold token is physical gold. So redemption only costs about 15 or 20 basis points, 0.2%. So you don't have a price risk. It's not like, you know, you sell your gold to buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin crashes 20% by the time, by the next day before you get it. You don't have that because you literally redeem it for the gold, so it follows the gold price. If, this, if it goes down, you know, then you just redeem it, you get the CGT cheap, you get the gold and you made free money. If it goes up, you just sell the CGT, CGT or you deposit some gold to sell the CGT to make free money, so you can arbitrage it, which is why cash gold token and physical gold basically stay at the same price. And uh, I would say those are two, the two main things which I will bring up right now. You know, you, you, you have a, a backup way of transferring wealth, uh, which doesn't involve uh, banks, and you have um, a way of actually moving bullion, and that's specifically through CGT. Bilke, can you tell us some of your upcoming plans for these systems for 2021 and beyond? Um, I think 2021 it's going to be the year where we really need to focus on our new vault. Um, we, are, we basically purchased a 180,000 square foot building. We'll have a 15,000 ton capacity silver vault, which will be three and a half times as big as what JP Morgan is, is rumored to have in silver holdings. So it will be really large. Uh, about to 500 tons of gold that we can deposit in 15 different vaults, uh, which will be out for lease and so on. So this is a major, major project. Um, but as part of that, I'm also looking to standardize more things towards the gram chain system. So that by 2022, by next year, we basically will have this immense capacity uh, and we will have gram chain applied to uh, our existing, more of our existing systems, and we'll have the testing uh, events on board, and we'll see if we can the auditors to use gram chain scanners directly uh, as a way to have the audit done in real time instead of having to wait, you know, for reports to be issued and other paperwork. And if you're ever dealing with the large, uh, big four audit companies, uh, so much paperwork there. So you will think that once they count the bars, you know, it's the next day you can get a report saying they counted it, but it, sometimes it can take months. So having, you know, taking all these things and doing it in a better way, uh, we are basically working on improving all of this. Um, plus we are launching, um, uh, what's called a gold savings account, which essentially is uh, a way for you to buy small amounts of gold and silver as a fungible sort of asset. So you can buy like $50 worth of gold or silver, uh, not yet silver, that's going to be later, but gold. And that's also coming out this year. We're launching it in Singapore first, uh, and then we'll be expanding it uh, out further. And that will also be cram chain based. So all new development is going to be cram chain based. Eventually, we'll be moving our older, more proprietary system towards the cram chain basis as well. Mm. And at the same time, uh, we are facing uh, uh, an issue because the cram chain right now uses the Ethereum blockchain, and Ethereum prices have skyrocketed. And you know, uh, to write anything, even this small letter to a blockchain, uh, in the past, a calculator will take us one cent. So every time I scan a bar, it will cost me one cent in in what's called gas, it's, that's what you pay for Ethereum uh, prices. But I think now we're talking about 10, 15 cents because too many people are using this. And 
uh, we basically have to uh, look for some alternative, more efficient ways of uh, writing our hashes. So we might have multiple hashes written and so on in order to be able to scale. So it's a little bit more uh, technical tinkering and improvements that we need to do as well. Uh, but we are looking for partners. So you know, anybody interested, um, get a hold of us. But I think 2022 is when things are going to get really uh, you know, a lot more features will be implemented, yeah. And hopefully by then we'll have enough interest and network effects that, you know, this is going to gonna blow up, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all very exciting, Gregor, because uh, we see you out there pushing the boundaries of the bullying industry, the fintech industry, and making it better for everyone in the community. And um, you've been doing that as you've always been. Um, in fact, that's been a hallmark of everything you've been trying to do since the day you began, pretty much, isn't it? Yes, in essence, I got very disappointed about financial system, uh, seeing the aftermath of Lehman Brothers and how things think, and, and I just want to change things. I, I'm sort of um, angry at, at what we let the, account, the financial system become, you know, because it didn't start off that way, and, and it just sort of has been degenerated. And, I think uh, it's the amount of money that is being printed nowadays, the amount of debt that's being taken. I mean, it's becoming clearer to more and more people that this cannot go on forever. And so I want to uh, create an alternative and I'm trying to do something, you know, to uh, hopefully help jumpstart something. Now, speaking of waking people up, <laughs> I mean, you'd woken up a long time ago, but, um, and there's a bit of a personal question. Uh, have you added more to your own silver stock? Well, I, I add a little bit of silver all the time, but right now a lot of my money is, personal money is going into helping to, to make sure the renovation all gets renovated the way we want because uh, renovating 180,000 square industrial building into a vault is, uh, it, takes, it takes a while to, to, you know, to chew on that. <laughs> Well, Gregory, it's been an absolute pleasure hearing from you again, uh, seeing that you're well and that you're so excited and pushing the boundaries as always. Thank you for being with us today, taking your time. Thank you for having me. Well, friends, thank you for joining us for this edition of Silver Bullion Television SBTV. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell button for notifications and updates from us. And if you truly enjoy what we do, feel free to give us a thumbs up or a like because we truly do appreciate your support and thank you greatly for it. Don't forget, our dear friend Patrick will be back with us for an exciting new show next week. And in the meantime, as he always says, saddle up and silver up, and take care. Audio sync, check one, two, three. <laughs> Sounds like there's some Reno going on. Pausing it for right there for a moment. <laughs> saddle up and silver up. Good night. It's not night. Damn it. I used to work on the 6 p.m. news. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry.